Hi guys, Kurt with Hypnodyne. Today we're going to take a look at some of the stimulation functions uh, in HD Recorder. These are primarily intended for people who want to experiment with lucid dreaming, uh, dream researchers, um, and perhaps a subset of these will also be useful uh, for people who want to uh, experiment with tweaking their wake-up program. And I'll go over what I mean by that in a second. But to briefly go over the new menu here, labeled uh, Stimulate, if we just first click on this uh, light bulb icon, we get a nice menu here that allows us to uh, choose a color for light stimulation and some parameters for the blinking. Now this is the usual uh, light cue uh, that is used for lucid dream induction with some more options and possibilities. So let's first of all test, uh, for instance, a purple blink. That is how the uh, ZMAX responds. Then we can try to tweak a bit the blinking rate and change color to red. Then we can decide to alternate the eyes. And the reason why you might want to experiment with different colors is because you want to get it, um, you want to increase the chance that this stimulus that's been delivered to your body during uh, the sleep, the REM sleep phase, you want to try to raise as much as possible the chance that it's going to actually get incorporated within the dream. And so one interesting possibility is to add a vibration to the stimulus. Now there was some research a while ago uh, that showed that uh, tactile stimuli uh, on the head region are very often uh, easier to incorporate within dreams. They get incorporated at a higher rate compared to, uh, to light-based stimulation. So you can have both, uh, as I've just displayed, or you can just have a vibration without any light. I'm not sure if you can hear the vibration here on the video, but you, you can see it moving around uh, due to it. Another possibility is to deliver sound to the, um, to the receiver. Now, there are two types of sound. The first one is very, very faint, nearly imperceptible. And the reason why that might be useful is, let's say that you're writing a setup, a script, where you're trying to, let's say, wait until 7 a.m. in the morning, and then you wait for the patient or yourself to have some arousal, some body movement. At that point, you decide to go in with a brief vibration or a brief sound cue, not too loud, uh, the idea is not to freak you out and put you in panic mode like an alarm clock would, but simply um, allow you to come out of that small arousal and into wake. Now, there have been a lot of dream studies, sorry, a lot of sleep studies in which people compare uh, uh, the self-reported uh, degree of um, restfulness of, the, of, of their sleep after being awakened in different sleep phases, so and one and two and three and REM sleep. But in my view, uh, far more important than which uh, sleep phase uh, you, you're awoken at is uh, do you or do you not pick an arousal? Because during that arousal, you're actually fully awake. You're just extremely prone to going back to sleep. Uh, I'm of the opinion that if you can catch that two or three seconds when you're already moving around and uh, deliver for example, the mild sound cue, it might be far easier to wake up in a way that feels... Uh, that feel, I, the reason I'm putting forth this theory is that I sometimes wake up feeling fully rested, but it's very, very rare. It's incredibly rare. And so, you know, the idea that it would just be related to, to the sleep cycle seems um, a bit strange. If it was related to just this lucky event of being able to wake up during an arousal event, then yeah, that, that would make sense. So this allows you to experiment with that. And it's all scriptable, as we'll see later and possibly in another video. The other thing you can do is just sound an alarm. Uh, for instance, if you're interested in detecting uh, nightmares, sleep terrors, um, sleep paralysis, and um, ending those, because they're, they're a very stressful experience, you might detect the heart rate, um, or actually the program detects that for you, but you can monitor uh, the heart rate uh, that's been detected. 
and then sound an alarm. You might also use this alarm if uh, there's a remote researcher that's trying to tell you, hey, it's time to go to bed or it's time to wake up or the study's finished uh, or whatnot. Finally, we have the possibility of using uh, this time only the white color light stimulation, but to try to tweak with our um, wake up program. So for instance, right now it's uh, oops, 903 and we want to start this one minute past where we are because it's got to start at 00 seconds and we start a sunrise routine of one minute so uh, in a minute or so this will begin to switch on the light and it will increase the intensity gradually now there have been a few products on the market that have tried or claimed to wake you up with uh, with light and that's interesting because as you know light um, it destroys uh, melatonin and uh, you know it makes you like not sleepy that's why you're not supposed to uh, look at your monitor at night but these products have two flaws uh, the first type is projecting light directly onto your eye which is good but it's a full mask so it being a full mask is quite uncomfortable and the other type is just a headband but then it's got trouble actually bringing the light to your eye so it's not really that bright. Consider that your eyes are closed. So the amount of light that your retina is actually absorbing is fairly minimal uh, compared to, let's say, if you were uh, if you were awake. I have actually developed, and this is still increasing brightness, I'm not sure how much of the you know, subtle changes in brightness you can see on the camera because it's probably gonna completely, oh in fact it lost focus as well but, but, if we switch this off for a moment. Okay, so I've developed these two things. These are flexible, transparent light pipes. Very tough to make, you know, a lot of the material that's advertised as being flexible and transparent is not really transparent, it's kind of yellowish. And, uh, you know, the light has to go through two, three centimeters of this material and so by the time it's, it goes from the LED on ZMAX to the other end where your eyes are, uh, there's a lot of uh, loss of light. But these, uh, I was able to tweak the curing temperature and get the material just right uh, so that they're completely transparent. And I'm gonna just put them on briefly. It's tough to do that and try to keep the device within the camera. I'm just trying to show you how they're inserted. It's a press fit mechanism. You just push them in and you can pull them out very easy. But now that they're there, see these bring light directly onto your eye. So whatever brightness, the high brightness LEDs were already producing, now is magnified even further. And so that is how you're able to, you know, for example, see blue light directly through your eyelids and if I go full brightness white light you know it's really very very bright so the interesting thing when you shoot light that's this bright through your eyelid is that there's a particular sensation of seeing bright light through your eyelid that people just normally only get when it, there's bright sunlight and they're out sun tanning or doing something in the sun outside and if you close your eyes and, and orient your face towards the sun, you will see that. And it's so specific to that kind of condition, like it never happens in any other case, that just by having this very strong stimulation going through your eyelids, it really gives you the sensation of sunshine, even though a lot of the other stuff, sensory data is not there. Like your skin is not getting warmer and you don't have the subtle breeze or the smell of the ocean, but just having this really bright light uh, going directly into your eyes reminds you very, very strongly. It's, a, it's an interesting sensation. Reminds you strongly of, um, of direct sunshine. So having this strong light should really destroy all the melatonin and allow you to wake up gradually. Now this can be scripted. So, you know, you can combine these things and you can say, you know, start the sunrise when there's an arousal in the morning. And by combining all of these features and experimenting, you might be able to find the um, wake up pattern that's, that's the best for you. I've also, uh, let me get rid of the light pipes for a second. 
these three buttons on ZMAX now have a function. So let's go through what I uh, programmed them to do. Let's start with button number one. It should start DreamLog. I hope it works because I'm also recording uh, audio from the, from the screen uh, recorder. So it might fail, but let's say you're sleeping and you just had a dream and want to record it. Instead of uh, waking up and finding your dream journal, you just push this button. Voice recording started. Okay, it worked. And then you, you talk and you say, I, just, I was just dreaming of X, Y, and Z. And by speaking into this, you're not forced to turn on the light, find your pen and, and jot down uh, your dream content. As you know, having a record of the dream content is paramount if you're going to do any kind of dream experimentation because otherwise they're forgotten. And if you forget your dreams, it doesn't make much sense to try to lucid dream. When you're done recording your dream, you just push the button again. Voice recording completed. And you will have a nice uh, MP3 file date stamped uh, in uh, the program folder. The function of the second button is to start a recording. So let's say you're, you're in bed and you're just relaxing and you want to start capturing a file when you push the button. It just began recording a file. And then you can push it again to stop. And by the way, this completed successfully. the scripting language also allows you to turn off the monitor, which is quite handy in my view. And finally, the third button, uh, you can have it do whatever you want. They're all scriptable, but just for demonstration purposes, I had it uh, play an audio file. And, you know, it doesn't make much sense to play an audio file when you push a button, but you would actually use the sound uh, playing function for lucid dream induction, for suggestion, like you could have an algorithm where you wait until N1 or you wait until uh, tonic REM, uh, where uh, audio suggestions are supposed to actually be incorporated some of the time. You can't do that in phasic REM, you can do it in tonic REM. Or anyway, pick a time when you're nearly asleep, but not quite. Uh, so your auditory cortex is not completely disconnected and, and offline. And then use that to play some music to set you in some particular mood or some suggestions or some sounds. Uh, so that's one thing that you could do. As for the script, you know, you can just uh, code a JavaScript file and uh, you can load it, reload it. And by coding JavaScript, you're able to assign a function uh, to each of the buttons and you're also able to respond to data coming in so you really have full control uh, over the capabilities of the device and hd recorder uh, exposes a bunch of very useful functions uh, related to what's being acquired like it will tell you the light intensity will tell you the heart rate it will tell you the temperature on the skin uh, by doing these things you're able to create setups such as you know wait until the heart rate is 120 or above and then play the alarm and that would perhaps help you to come out of a nightmare um, so, you know, a lot, of, a lot that you can do with it, I'm still adding functions uh, that, that are going to be accessible uh, from, from JavaScript, such as, uh, you know, getting a variable that contains the, the sleep stage, that would be quite handy. Uh, but the next task is to do solid RAM detection, and I've purposely delayed that until uh, the JavaScript scripting um, phase was over, because I want to code RAM detection in JavaScript, so that it's not a hard-coded feature of the software, but instead is a script that you can go in and modify and tweak uh, and make it work for you. Some people might need it to be a little bit more sensitive for some applications, and some other people might say, you know, I'm, I'm okay with uh, with false, uh, I'm okay with false negatives, but I don't want any false positives. In other words, I don't want it to stimulate me when I'm not even sleeping. And there's many other things you can do. For example, you can assign one of the buttons, like button three that I'm not really using right now, I was just playing a sound with it, but you could assign button three to uh, say, you know, a delay, like if you're in bed and you don't want to be disturbed with stimulation. That's how the Nova Dreamer used to do it. And honestly, you don't even need that with ZMAX because you could just detect the amount of movement and if you just move it or tap it, then it, may, it would know that, you know, you don't want to be disturbed. So that's all I have for today. This is still under heavy development, but all that I've shown you is already working. If you have any questions, post them below or write us and thank you very much for watching as usual.